Super Scientific Reload Study 8.0. We're looking at the reality of keeping our eyes on the threat instead of the magwell during the reload process. 300 reloads were conducted across two days and each method was broken down into 100 static, 25 turning, and 25 moving reloads. The two contrasting methods being assessed will be the threat focused and magwell focused reloads in reference to the focal point of the eyes. The magwell reloads were conducted first to give the threat reloads the large benefit of a warmed up movement pattern to go from, as the study is only about the difference in consistency in regards to the object of focus for the eyes. And like we've gone over in previous studies, the position of the slide itself shouldn't affect the total time of the reload, so I'm going to keep the slide forward to reduce the variables in the reload process. All reloads were conducted with a standard sized magazine well at an urgent speed as it would be in the context of an emergency reload. But to maintain a more repeatable reload, I've toned it back to about 80% speed to make the movement more consistent between both options. It should also be noted that I am playing the philosophy behind a threat focused reload out to its fullest extent. If we must keep our eyes on the threat for the reload, then we must keep our eyes on the threat if the reload goes badly as well. I also completed 30 reloads entirely blind to observe if the peripherals assisted in any way with the magazine insertion. Your eyes on the threat. When looking at the blind reloads, the averages were extremely similar to the standard threat focused reloads, which seems to show that the peripheral vision of the magwell doesn't greatly assist in magazine insertion. If we look at the magazine well, we may be able to use our peripherals and other senses to keep awareness of the threat and grasp that the situation has changed while we were looking at that magwell for 0.56 seconds. The peripherals, however, don't appear to be sharp enough to assist in the reverse scenario of lining up the magazine with the magwell in real time while focusing on the threat. Of course, there are situations like low light, no light, where we may need to rely on our ability to complete the reload without the assistance of our vision, but if our eyeballs are working and have enough light to see, they do appear to help with the reload. You can also observe that the time averages for the threat focused reload were worse when the index point was changing during the turning and moving reloads. This is also in a best case scenario where the shooter is warmed up and focusing on a target that isn't moving itself. Taking my average reload speed and observing the focal shift of the magazine well frame by frame resulted in a time off target of roughly 0.65 seconds, which stayed relatively consistent when there were no issues with magazine insertion. That time is also remarkably close to the total difference in time averages of 1.98 and 1.48 between the two methods, which seems to say if you aren't going to look at the magwell during the reload, you will likely pay for it in the time it would have taken to look at the magwell initially. Looking at the results, you can see that my fastest reloads were practically the same in both options, and when the threat reload worked, it worked just as well as the magwell reload. Clearly, I still had hang-ups and issues even when looking at the magwell, but they were fixed quicker and happened less frequently, which is reflected in the average. The red numbers you're seeing indicate reloads that were 50% slower than the average reload of 1.48 seconds, meaning that any reload that took longer than 2.22 seconds was classified as a major failure. In the threat focused reloads you can see that 35 total reps were major failures and 11 of those reps took double or more than the average time. Contrasted to the 5 reps which were major failures in the magwell focused reloads, you can see that the threat focused reloads were 7 times more likely to cause a major failure. Further, catastrophic issues such as the magazine being dropped entirely on the ground occurred 9 times in the threat focused reloads and twice in the magwell focused reloads. Finally, after 300 reloads, I conducted one and only one stream of 4 reloads in each method with no retry. At first I didn't like that the movement pattern observed in the magwell focused reloads clearly changes more than the threat focus, however, this is likely why the consistency is higher as the body adapts when the eyes see a misalignment. In the context of an emergency reload and empty gun, time is likely of high importance and consistency is therefore vital. Remember, time equals bullets.